What's up guys? Today we are talking about the support build for V Rising, what I think is the best. We have a couple options to talk about and I'm going to be quite transparent. Normally I start these videos off with like a montage showing the PvP gameplay and I was working on that. I was getting some good clips together and then I realized that they weren't good. Like they were good clips they weren't good enough for a montage it's not because they weren't good enough as an actual pvp perspective but uh because it's hard to make a montage of uh me healing my allies and buffing them and saving them and it's less of a flashy role so it, it was hard for me to make like a cool montage to show it off but i hope with the plethora of builds i made and the analysis i've done that you guys can trust me a little bit here i've done some practice with this build i've used it i've tried it out in some 2v2 events and on duels uh, and a little bit on the server and so I put some hours on this I feel confident in it and my game knowledge to be able to talk about it so hopefully you you guys enjoy but uh, we're gonna get right into it um, first things first the biggest thing you're gonna want is you're gonna want to make sure you get your general soul reaper so this is a two to three weapon build uh, the way I manage it's general soul reaper is the one that you need for sure and then the other two either go you know, slashers or crossbow if you're on the server where you can run multiple weapons that you feel confident like it's not full loot go for it even on full loot if you're feeling confident in it then you can go for all three uh, but i recommend one of the two um the difference uh is going to depend on your play style so but either way uh the spells that you're going to use is going to be focused on spell power you want to have as much kind of like um kind of uh oomph that you can have uh with it and so having the extra uh six spell power as well as the increased cr uh, spell crit strike chance which does apply on heals uh is really beneficial so you're going to be using this whenever you're casting an ability you can also use just like the base uh reaper abilities but whenever you're casting one of your spells you want to make sure that this is equipped so you can maximize how efficient you are with supporting your teammates and then the other two just come down to the, the, your playstyle. If you are a bit more aggressive and want to use the support playstyle to focus on getting your end caps off, uh, you know, or uh, you know, knocking back after an end cap right to your abilities or to your teammates, uh, then the slash may be. If you're going to stay back more and try to play the, the long distance game, let your teammate be up here, then maybe go in the crossbow and using the range uh, in between spell casts uh, is the move for you. So. It's really up to you, or if you can, all three would be preferable so that you can have a mixture of uh, supporting your teammates with the best uh, in cap uh, in the game at the moment, and then also applying your slows and interrupts uh, long distance if you need to do so in combat. So those are the three weapons I recommend. Also, since we mentioned it already for spell power, we are gonna be going Scholar's Blood with this. Uh, the reason why is the spells that we're using scale off the amount of spell power and so we want to have that 20 percent increased spell power from the scholar blood the reduced cooldown spells is also important because it means that you can get your heals or your shields back up quicker which means that your ally can be even stronger or you yourself can stay alive longer the spell life leech is nice just because uh it plays well with some of the abilities you use as well as the capability just kind of making sure that you stay alive while you support your teammates and then the chance to reset spell cooldown on cast is obviously a huge thing because um, as we get into the spells, you'll be able to see, hey, if I can just like start spam casting that, that's amazing. Um, so would highly recommend. So those are the weapons uh, and the blood type. Um, again, you're going to be using your General Soul Reaper just for having your abilities. And then your other ones, you'll be using like the slashers for the end capital so they need to help. And then obviously you damage them too, but let your allies also get some damage down. And the crossbow, if you want to stick more far range and, and poke down in between your spells, it's really up to you. But I would recommend uh, one of those two, if not both, to pair well with your General Soul Reaper so that you can utilize abilities. Um, for the dash, uh, we're going Veil of Illusion. Um, just because the, the distance on the ga dash is nice and the recast capabilities I find are really potent. Uh, from my experience, uh, the moment people start to realize that you're a support or a heal, they decide to, fart, uh, decide to target you. And so uh, having the capabilities of trying to be able to outplay them, you know, do things with your recast and your end cap and everything like that, just having the distance that the illusion dash gives is really nice. And you can kind of, uh, once you get good skill and synergy with whoever you're playing with, you can also utilize this of, you know, if I'm being chased here, my teammates over here, I can dash towards my teammate and then they either have to chase me into my teammate, uh, which if they do, I can recast away uh, or I'm in the safety of my teammate with that long distance. So that's why I like the Veil of Illusion. Uh, the other option would be the Veil of Chaos, just if you want uh, the double dash capabilities to be able to maneuver and dodge multiple abilities. You know, having that second cast allows you to redirect yourself. Um, so that's also an option, but I prefer personally uh, running the Illusion Dash. 
Uh, then abilities, there's actually uh, three abilities I've been playing around with. Uh, if any of you watched uh, the 2v2 tournament I did with Icebox, I actually was running a similar build to this, uh, to kind of support him. Um, and so the options are uh, your Sanguine Coil, uh, which you launch a projectile that deals 75% magic damage and leaves just 40% health on the enemy hit. And he also heals ally for 100% and self for 40% of your spell power on ally hit. So for your spell power. So again, if uh, this bookcase over here is my ally, if I throw it here, as you saw, the free cast. So you can get the free cast off, which applies to the stacks you have total. Up to three uh, are stored at once. And once you um, use them all, you have to wait for it to come back up and start rebuilding, right? But that free cast can help store even more of those and get even more. Uh, these are really potent in terms of being able to heal your allies. But this is more of a skill. Um, this is no you. This is a skill shot, and movement can be crazy. So this needs to be something that you are confident in your skill shots to be able to land. Luckily, the actual what, the casting is a bit uh, long, but once it shoots out, it's a pretty fast projectile. Um, so you have that, and then uh, of course, if like, this bookshelf is an enemy. I can shoot that there and uh, just deal more damage and heal myself depending on how the battle is going. Uh, power Surge is also because it removes all negative effects and applies a shield that absorb uh, or on ally yourself that shields the target for 120% of your spell power. So again, writing the Scholar Blood with the General Soul Reaper as well um, as uh, rocking the Shadow of the Frozen Crypt for the... the um, with the ability cooldown and everything else, um, the power surge is going to be your friend because you can remove negative effects on your allies so that you can kind of negate knowing any burns or uh, anything like that, uh, kind of help get them out of situations and kind of apply a shield. That's going to be super strong as well as the increased movement speed and everything else. And so with this also, because of the chance to reset, a lot of times I've gotten lucky where I, uh, I've casted it on myself. And just like that, I get the free cast that I could cast on my ally or vice versa or just... Just keep going. All right, we got three in the room. Um, so you can really start like kind of applying that, and that's movement speed is underrated in this game. So just having as much movement speed as you can and being able to apply it with your ally a lot is super beneficial. And you see, um, the shield with all of this is a pretty pretty strong. We're at 493, and this puts us up to uh, 558. Um, so that's what a 65. Um, health maybe math is wrong it's late um increase which is going to be uh very very large uh the third ability which i kind of teased about as well is you can also run crimson agus if you wanted to i actually ran this in the 2v2 tournament video so if you want to check it out and uh, the finals you can check it out but basically the reason why is slashers are super meta right now and so going slashers into a spear queue is very common and so if you see the option of your ally or you uh, or not you, but if your ally gets in capped, you can pop the Crimson Shield. You see that explosion that goes out? Um, and that knocks enemies away. Now, it doesn't knock them away long enough that they still can potentially get the Spear Q off, but then it's going to be less of the time kind of lines up with it. It won't be as much damage because of the shield. But if they go invisible, like if, uh, if I'm the, my ally and someone just goes, I uh, know, slash or invisible uh, nearby, and I know that they're going on my ally, um, to end cap, I can pop the Crimson Aegis and it knocks them away so their end cap doesn't hit and my ally could escape. So that's the other option if you're facing a lot of slashers, you can run that. Obviously, you lose the, uh, the heal. Um, but so I, you could talk about Crimson Aegis if you're not as confident in your skill shots. Uh, but I think Power Surge is, a, is the mandatory. And then ult ultimates, there are two options. You have Spectral Guardian. Um, you summon the Spectral Guardian that shields your allies for 120% of the spell power. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. This is option one. This is more of the defensive option. If you want to focus on healing your al or like kind of shielding your allies, providing this large goal, and that's going to help protect you and your teammates and be able to fight within it. That's the more defensive option. The more aggressive option is actually be Volatile Arachnid. Summon Spilings that chase down the enemies and explode when uh, nearby dealing 100% magic damage. Spawns a Toxic Fumes that deals 20% magic damage uh, while slowing enemies. Uh, the reason why I also like this one um, is because what this will do is this will create a lot of this AoE area where uh, enemies are now focused on avoiding these and less on you guys, which gives your t you and your teammate a lot of opportunity, as well as the, uh, the strong amount of damage and the slow field that would apply allows you to hit abilities easier. So I actually like this for more aggressive option. Um, those are the two I would recommend uh, with this build. So let me know your guys' thoughts, if everything makes sense, if it all sounds uh, cool. If you end up checking out the support build, please let me know. And I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, peace out.